All right, welcome sports fans. Charles E. Smith Jr. here. This is an Inside Sports production. This is, of course, from the arena. We're live from Staples Center, and a lot of you are expecting to see uh, Andrew Knoll and not this uh, dapper, handsome gentleman next to me. <laughs> this is Dave Panyota of the fourth period. And, Dave, you know what? We're going to go ahead and give you your props. Well, thank you very much. I know I can't say it as well as you, so let everybody know what you do in this, this incredible journey that you've taken that has made you... <laughs> Incredibly unpopular in the hockey world, so uh, talk to us here. Well, the fourth period, uh, you know, we produce Hockey's Lifestyle magazine, kind of a GQ meets NHL feel, uh, kind of that whole behind-the-scenes kind of uh, kind of look in the uh, the National Hockey League. So, uh, different perspectives, uh, you know, that that bring uh, that bring us to the table, and it's it's been good. We're really excited uh, to keep it going. All right, so, you know, you're being a little bit modest here. I'm going to read off your credentials here, homeboy. <laughs> Dave Panyota, President, Editor-in-Chief. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Since, uh huh. Since June of 2002, you were an NHL columnist for NBC Sports from 04 to 09. Yep. You were an analyst for Fox Sports Radio from 01 to 03. And, uh, yeah, my you resume? On I, I do have your resume, yeah. <laughs> You'd be amazed what you can find on Wikipedia. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That internet thing, man. Yeah. Fantastic. That's, that's a good device. All right, so we're, you're based out in Toronto, so yes. we're, we're going to go ahead and talk some East Coast in a little bit. But right now, we got to get to the business at hand. We've got ourselves a crisis here on the West Coast. <laughs> the Los Angeles Kings, our beloved Los Angeles Kings, just dropped this game to the Dallas Stars 2-1. to one. They've now lost four in a row in yep. the month of December, and they have not scored more than two goals in their last eight games. They beat St. Louis back on November 22nd. And I'll ask you, now you're a hockey man, I'm a hockey man, but i got to get a perspective maybe from another country, uh, another coast. It just stands to reason that when you add talents like Simon Gagne, like Mike Richards, right. to your lineup in the offseason without sacrificing a lot of offense, now the Kings come back, they are the lowest scoring team in the Western Conference. How does that, something's not adding up here. No, definitely not. I mean, I, I think it, it really comes down to the secondary scoring on this team, and, and you're looking at your, your bottom six guys, and, and if they're not able to produce, it makes it really tough to win hockey games when the opposition knows that they can zero in on your first and second lines and not necessarily have to worry about your third line being an offensive threat. Yeah, you know, that's funny. You talk about the uh, secondary scoring. The only goal tonight was from Brad Richardson. That's right. <laughs> of the Kings, yeah. who gets his first goal of the season. Brad Richardson is a notorious grinder out here for the Kings. But, man, you'd sure like to see them just get something cranked up. And I know, you know, you're being East Coast, but you keep an eye on everything going on. Absolutely. Going on out here. Absolutely. So, have to. Yeah, exactly. But it's, it's getting a little bit perplexing. And when you talk to the fans, the fans have talked a little bit about uh, maybe – you know, them career, Terry Murray, the coach, his career path maybe being yeah. redirected would seem like, I don't know, that's always the most obvious fix is just to replace the po coach. As they say, you can't replace 20 players, but right. you can replace one guy behind the bench. Yeah, you can, but, I mean, you're looking at the way that, that it's not like the team has been blown out the last four games. They've been in it. Uh, they, they've, they've been competing. They've been, they've been doing half uh, of the 60 minutes right. Uh, usually when teams aren't listening to their coach or have a bad system in place, they're poor defensively, mm -hmm. they're unable to uh, to back up their goaltender when needed, and that doesn't seem to be the case here in Los Angeles, especially the last few games. It's just offensively, they can't seem to be to uh, to produce, and, and quite frankly, there's only so much blame you can put on the coach without looking at the rest of the roster. You have to look at the guys up front and say, look, you're not getting the job done. You need to figure it out for yourself. There's only so much I can do to readjust the lineup, give you new line mates. If the guys aren't working with everybody on the team, then it's a personal problem with the player that they've got to get underway, uh, out of the way, rather. And at the same time, if you're going to make some kind of move, mm -hmm. you have to look at Dean Lombardi uh, in the front office as the general manager of this team and say to him, look, these guys just need some kind of spark and need some confidence back in their system. Give me some extra scoring. Exactly, and uh, well, the the other problem is when I talk about that's where you, normally the offense uh, comes from. But here the Kings are looking like last season that they were in a really enviable position, and that is with uh, with a, a, a blue line anchored by Drew Doughty, who was mm -hmm. a Norris uh, Trophy finalist just two seasons ago in 2010, and Jack Johnson, who is an incredible talent, although you know his development has been a little bit sketchy here and there. So that's an enviable position for a lot of teams. Yeah. And 
I'm not seeing a whole lot this year from really either of those guys, and especially, you know, Dowdy just kind of looks lost. Yeah, he, he seems like he's doing a little too much out there, and, and for whatever the reason, it just it doesn't look like he's he's – I, not necessarily adjusted back to the NHL style because, you know, of course he missed training camp and he did come in late. Right. Um, but it just seems like he's trying to overcompensate for either his mistakes or for the team's inability to make any kind of kind of offensive rush into the opposition zone. And because of that, because you're trying too much, you see that a lot with goaltenders a lot. They try to overcompensate. It doesn't work out. It's in their head. And they have all these mind games that they have to battle with. Right. That seems to be the case with a lot of these guys on this team. The offensive guys can't get it done. They try to do something too too much. Take a stupid penalty. Drew comes out, tries to tries to rush the rush, coughs up the puck, takes a stupid penalty, or uh, does something inappropriate at, at his level uh, for a player of his stature. Exactly, and, and one who's supposed to really become a leader on the team, even though right. he's as young as he is. But and we look at tonight's game in question. Uh, two to one game. Dallas is up two to one. Drew Doughty takes an inconceivable cross checking right. penalty at 12.58 of the third, so that's two less minutes you have to work on the five-on-five, five. and really, for a team that wasn't, didn't really come out with a lot of fire tonight in the Los Angeles Kings, that was, you know, the wrong penalty to take at the, at the wrong time. That was, it was inconceivable. Yeah, well, the, this team took seven or eight minor penalties today, and, and seven of eight of them shouldn't have happened. Uh, it, it was, I just, I couldn't grasp. Two high-sticking calls by, you know, on Justin Williams yep. tonight, who's not, who has no reputation as a dirty player no. whatsoever. But all of a sudden, Justin Williams, you know, he gets the stick up twice. Yeah, there's a, there's a bad tripping call. Um, there's an interference call. There's a bad boarding call on uh, on Jared Stoll in the second mm -hmm. period. I mean, these are these are penalties that should not be. This is this, it shouldn't even be part of the conversation. We shouldn't right. be talking about this right now. But they just can't seem to to click on those cylinders. And and again, it really comes down to to pushing yourself a little too hard in trying to make sure that you're getting this play and creating these chances. Uh, and they've got to fix that soon. There's only like I said, there's only so much Terry Murray can do. And, and beat these guys in in their heads and say, look, you have to stop doing this. Beat I can't. Guys I, in the head. Yeah, that's well, that, that, do something because you can't bench 20 guys. That, that's absolutely true. So, yeah, something's got to take place here. And I'll tell you what, you know what, my uh, next guest, Jimmy Bramlett from L.A. East, he's waiting in the wings over there. <laughs> he was just down in the locker room. He got to talk to the fellas. He talked to Terry Murray. He's going to give us some insight. So uh, thank you for joining me here. And you know what, thank tell you. everybody where they can find you. The Fourth Period Magazine. Of course, I read it. I'm a loyal reader, loyal subscriber. I have myself an autographed copy <laughs> of the Fourth Period Magazine, but talk to everybody out there. Well, you can definitely, thank you, by the way, very much for that. <laughs> uh, you can definitely pick it up at your local Barnes & Noble shops, or you can check us out online at thefourthperiod.com for the magazine and other insights in the National Hockey League. All right, perfect. Now, one thing before you go, and that is the realignment. Yeah. Okay, now, for conferences they say yes not divisions right conferences i like it you like it I, I like the way it's set up it makes more sense geographically and, and from a travel standpoint it makes a lot more sense for these guys uh for these teams because it's it's less travel overall uh, i guess if you look at the two conferences in the east florida and tampa bay really are the only ones that kind of get the shaft because they basically join the northeast so it's a little extra travel for them but overall uh, you, you hope to overcompensate that with the snowbirds that are from Ontario and Quebec that live now in Florida, uh, in Miami, in the Tampa region. Uh, seeing the Canadians, the Bruins, and the, and the Leafs more often translates into, into stronger ticket sales. So it kind of offsets in that regard. But mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I like it. I like the travel uh, system. I think they just have to work on how things are going to work out from a playoff perspective, um, which they're still trying to solidify. Exactly, and that was one thing that I that I talked about. Though was it's one thing to have a, that's fine for the regular season, but I don't like the four conference thing because what they're talking about is yeah. having four teams from each conference, so to speak, make it to the playoffs. Which meaning that if you have a strong conference, you could wind up with uh, you know with four of those teams, some of those teams not making it, then another another conference right next to you. Right. Uh, well, see, the interesting yeah. thing now is, is, and this just came out a couple of days ago, is that we may even see the fourth and fifth seeded teams in each conference play each other in a mini series, a three game best of three series, to move on and become kind of like a wild card position in baseball and move on to that next round and be that fourth official seed. So you have one and four and two and three going against each other. 
I don't know about that one. I know okay. the teams like it because of TV revenue, and, and maybe it gets an extra game or two for the for those teams. But now you're just prolonging the season even more and prolonging the playoffs even more. Exactly. And the thing is that if you want to see the best players and the players playing their best at the most important time of the year, right. you shorten the season, you don't lengthen it. E- exactly. Yeah, that, and that's, right. that's the whole we thing. We all love so. to see hockey, but that's what it comes <laughs> down to. These guys are human beings. They're not actually uh, on a video game or anything. So, you know, they get muscle aches and uh, little aches and pains Trains, right. pulls, everything else, and they're beat up by the time the end of the year comes around. <laughs> Absolutely. They don't want to add any more playoff games. And if we have to watch these kind of penalties being taken any longer than we already have to, it's, it's going to be strenuous on us, too. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. <laughs> so, you know what? This is a good time for a reminder from one of our sponsors, which is the, the Puck Shops here. The Puck Shops here. Not Stops here. Beautiful. Shops here. I like it. Yeah, just go there for all your online hockey gear. They've got all the best brands at the best prices. And if you enter the code Inside Sports upon checkout, you get a 10% discount. Does that apply to me too? It does apply Perfect. to you, definitely. Awesome. Whether you're in the United States or in Canada. Can- Canadian. <laughs> Isn't that where the you're? The great, great Canadians. white north? Canadians. Canadians. Mm-hmm. Canadians. Yeah. Yeah, we're good. Canadians. We're nice people. You are. We try to be, anyway. The puck shop's here, everybody, and they partner with Inside Sports. So, of course, we're going to pass that on to you, the viewers and listeners, because we do this show for you. And let's go ahead and bring in my next guest, Dave. Thanks for joining us. And as uh, Jimmy, 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 Jimmy Bram that gets ready to uh, come in here. Why, hello there. Are you ready? Microphone check, microphone check. Check, check, check. (laughs) Look, there you are in the little box. You see that? That's you. That's magic. That's you there. That's the magic of the live That's internet. That's the camera that you look into. Yes, I see that. This is me. I'm Charles. This is Jimmy Bramlett of L.A. East. And Jimmy, I know I won't do you justice, so you go ahead and introduce, you know, who you are, what you do, and all that stuff. Read your resume. Um, it's a very slim resume. <laughs> um, I am the sports editor of LAist.com, L-A-I-S-T.com, um, and my my big beats are the Dodgers and the Kings right now, for now, um, and it's been a very trying year, I would have to say, <laughs> between both teams. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, no divorces or anything taking place here with the Kings, but... Not yet. Uh, yeah, they got this ugly game they just played against Dallas, and we talk about it. They lost this game. They haven't scored more than two goals in the last eight games. They dropped this one to Dallas. You were just down there in the room, talked with some of the fellas, uh, talked with Terry Murray, the coach. What's the what's the feeling that's going on there at this point? I mean, they lose this game 2-1. to one. Well, for the second game in the row, uh, Terry Murray had an extensive talk with the players in the dressing room, so we were a little delayed getting in there. But the main theme uh, that uh, both Dustin Brown and Rod Scuderi uh, said was that the team needed more desperation. And uh, Terry Murray... More of a sense of purpose. With, well, Terry Murray uh, distilled it down to, in, that, in this third period, the players needed to be at the net, not going towards the net. Right. So he, he wants to see them play with more abandon without making these stupid penalties, the five or six or however many um, offensive zone penalties that right. they had right. tonight. And it started off, you know, first period we had a, uh, a little bit of a scrap with Steve Ott, who, you know, he scraps as well as anyone out there. Willie Mitchell in his first game back comes yes. out, gets into a fight. Uh, the uncharacteristic we talked about, though, two high-sticking calls on Justin Williams, who, you know, never basically never gets penalties. And then the uh, Drew Doughty, the cross-checking call there in the, in the third period, which, you know, it really helped to seal the game for the Dallas Stars. And, yes. Uh, so, yeah, lots of things just the wheels seem to be coming off here. Yes, and um, I asked Dustin penalties, uh, Dustin Brown specifically about these penalties in the offensive zone, and he just said he didn't have a he didn't have an answer for it. He said, you know, these are stupid. We shouldn't be taking these penalties, and whatever um, momentum they have, what very little momentum they have in that offensive zone, just mm-hmm. goes completely out of the window when they have to kill these penalties off. Definitely, and like you said, with Terry Murray and now. Uh, you said he did have an extensive talk with him in the, in the locker room, and then uh, Murray. But how was he with the when he was talking to the media down there? Did he seem a little bit, a little bit surly? Is he getting? Do you sense that he's kind of reaching the end of his patience a bit? 
After listening to him for a couple minutes, I want him to do a post-death analysis of my funeral. Because he had, he had me believing that they're going to turn this around and they're going to win the President's Cup. His belief is that they've, they've improved on 5-on-5, five five on five, even though they scored zero goals. Right, a shorthanded goal by Richardson, assist by Kopitar tonight, the only goal the, that they scored. The only goal. And one of the few positive things they had going for them on the ice tonight in fact, they have not had a lead since they won 2-1 to one against the Florida Panthers on December 1st. Exactly, exactly. So, he's... Lowest scoring team in the Western Conference. I mean, that just goes on and on and yeah. on. But he thinks they're close. And... I don't know what else to say. <laughs> well, you know what, Dustin... Okay, well, Dustin Penner didn't score tonight, but he had scored in the... Uh, he scored and had an assist... And had points in back-to-back -back games, and before that, he was mired in a uh, he was zero goals and two assists on the season, which had him tied with Jonathan Quick. But uh, it looks like he's now busted ahead of Quick, and he's going to uh, win that scoring race with Jonathan Quick at least as the season goes For on. For now, and Penner mentioned this to us uh, quite a bit quite a bit ago, but he says that um, having been injured so often these last couple of seasons, mm -hmm. it does take a psychological toll on him on the ice and it makes him a little too tentative so maybe he's starting to bust out of that who knows what well, we have we have to see well i'll tell you what let's go ahead and take a look uh look forward here's the kings the upcoming road trip now that's going to be uh tuesday in boston thursday in columbus saturday at detroit so that's three games in five days once they get started there and the third of those games has got to be at detroit you know you don't want to go in there a step slow and then Monday they'll be in Toronto and they come back here uh, next week on the 22nd to face Anaheim. So going on that road trip, some, some tough games out there. Toronto's playing better than they have in the past. Columbus is the one game they you'd think yeah. when you just look at the schedule and say, okay, that's the game that you should win. But remember, if you go in there and score two goals or less against Columbus, you're probably going to lose against them as well. Yes. It's... um. It's a pretty daunting trip, just looking at it. Um, but Dustin Brown said, you know, it doesn't matter at home, on the road, we just need to play with more intensity. <laughs> Absolutely. So hopefully they'll come back and bust out of this thing because a I mean, a four game losing streak here at, at uh, you know, in these last games is just not going to get it done. And this is one of those teams that I was talking with Dave about this too is that uh, with them with the lack of scoring what makes it even more puzzling is that this off season you look at the way the Kings played last year then in the off season you add offense to your team you add Simon Gagne you add Mike Richards without giving up a big part of your scoring you bring in more offense and all that translates into is on the ice ultimately less offense so I'm looking at it and it really doesn't just uh, the numbers don't add up, and plus, the blue line is not being triggered. Do Drew Doughty, who was you know, brilliant in 2010, uh, a little bit uh, uneven last year, and then this year has come out and just looks kind of lost out there. The only time you notice Drew Doughty is when he goes into a penalty box. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what more can be said? But my take on it, I think when uh, when Gagne and uh, Richards, when they were signed here. I think the rest of the players decided or just felt a little c content seeing, oh, the pressure's off a little bit now, so we can relax a little bit. And I think that's the problem they're falling into right now. Well, when we look at it, the way that, and everyone thought that it would be, you know, Mike Richards and, Mike Richards, excuse me, and Simone Gagne reunited on a line to work that same magic they had in Philadelphia for all those years before being separated last year. But uh, it turned out that instant chemistry on that top line with Andre Kopitar centering Justin Williams and Simone Gagne, and then the second line being... Uh, being uh, Mike Richards playing with, with Dustin Brown, mm -hmm. and then, you know, Penner or whomever the flavor of the month was yeah. on, on left wing over there. But, you know, they spread out their talent amongst the team. It wasn't the two of them jumping onto one line. They took both those guys who bring a lot of offense, split them up on the top two lines, and they were producing. You know, Gagne's been a little cold here lately. But 
I I don't know. It just doesn't seem to add up. Here comes Sophie. She's one of the King's fantastic, fantastic uh, media people here. Sophie, you can stick your head in here if you want. She's cute. We like we like pretty girls in here. <laughs> oh, I have right, absolutely no steps. comment on that. None whatsoever. <laughs> yes, it's best that way, Jimmy. <laughs> All right, coming back here. And again, if you're just joining us, we're live here at Staples Center. The show is from the arena, which is an inside sports production. I'm Charles E. Smith, Jr., alongside... Jimmy Bramlett with LAS.com. <laughs> Who is filling in for... Andrew Noll. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> you I'm have been paying this. attention. I do, right. I do watch inside sports. All right, you know what? I'm going to get your take on something. No. Oh. Oh no! I had talked with they. I had talked with Dave about the realignment. Mm -hmm. what, what's your take on that? Then, not four divisions, but four actual conferences. Four conferences, with with each one with uh, four teams from each conference supposedly going to make the playoffs. But then again, when I look at and I was I look at the uh, Eastern Conference, that Southeast, where Washington, you know, is traditionally kind of weak. Although Florida's playing well this year, but Washington. Feasted on those teams in their division, mm -hmm. and uh, to the point where they were always a somehow a weak Stanley Cup favorite. Everybody would jump on the bandwagon before they realized they were beating up on four teams that weren't going to make the playoffs. But if we look at the way that this goes, it's quite possible that you could have a division like that. If one of these divisions winds up very weak, you could have four weak teams getting in the division, another stronger division, a lot of guys not making it, a lot of teams yeah. not making it. So... That could, I think, uh, cause some hurt feelings, so to speak. But I like the way that they have realignment because they've realigned it because of the travel situation. That definitely makes sense. That makes sense. But like you said, you could go back to when the NHL first expanded and they had one conference that was f filled with expansion teams. Right, and then you had what Saint, the St. Louis Blues being Went to swept, the final, uh, being two swept years in a row, three years in a row, right? <laughs> Twice by Montreal, <laughs> once by Boston, if I recall, right? It was, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's the nightmare situation with this realignment plan. But why not? It makes the most sense, doesn't it? <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't. I like the I like the realignment, but they have to do something with the playoff system. And when I look at it, they say they want four conferences, but really, if I'm unless I'm reading this wrong, isn't this the West and this the East, with a few teams switched? Essentially, so, <laughs> why not have the still the Western and the Eastern Conference just realign the division so that during the season it cuts down on travel, it feeds those natural rivalries in there, and then when you come playoff time, let's go ahead and reward you know, the best teams for what they do. Make it East and West still, or if you want to go Conference A and Conference B, that's fine, with uh, divisions 1, 2, 3, and 4 within Conferences A and Conference B. Let's bring back the old school names. The Norris. <laughs> the Norris, the Smythe, the Adams. Yeah, oh, yeah Patrick the... Division. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> let's, let's just make this, let's create this gravitas. <laughs> Why okay. not? I didn't go to college, so I don't know what that word really means, but just one Look more time <laughs> before we go here, just a reminder that uh, Inside Sports has partnered with thepuckshopshere.com. That's uh, hockey gear online, already discounted prices. And for the loyal Inside Sports listeners, enter the code Inside Sports Upon checkout, you will receive an additional 10% discount. I will shop there right now. Yeah, definitely. I know you need a new, por new pair of skates there, man. I, you know what? I will forego filing my story, and I will shop for new skates. <laughs> All right, perfect. Well, before we go, we're just about out of time here. Jimmy Bramlett, Charles E. Smith, Jr., this is an Inside Sports production. This is from the arena, and this is a Saturday night tradition here. This is our fifth show. Anytime the Kings play a Saturday night game, this will follow about 20 minutes or so after the, uh, after the game ends. You can tune right here to Ustream.tv and watch live. And by the way, if you want to follow on Twitter and get all the latest from Inside Sports, there's the Twitter follow. It's at The Inside Sports. We also have a channel on YouTube, which is The Inside Sports. And we're also on Blip.tv. That is Inside Sports TV on Blip.tv. So, and you can also read Jimmy at... 
L-A-I-S-T.com. L-A-I-S-T. Dot com. Something like that. You know, you scared me there for a second when you talked about Saturday Night Traditions. You know, I thought we would have to go streaking in this coldest arena in the United States. Just, you know, scared me just for a second. And probably scared all of your viewers. Yeah, and now I've got a visual that's going to be stuck in my head for the rest of the week. I do my best. All right. Hey, thanks for joining us. Again, I'm Charles E. Smith, Jr. This is Jimmy Bramlett. The show is from the arena, and it's an Inside Sports production. Thanks for joining us. Good night.